Hello guys, Bingo Cat here and I am back today with another review video. So today I will be reviewing the iPad Mini 4. The iPad Mini 4 was released on September 9th, 2015 and here I am with the iPad Mini 4 over one year later. Now I actually didn't buy the iPad Mini 4 when it came out. I only bought this iPad Mini 4 a few weeks ago on eBay for $300. Now you think Apple would have already announced a new iPad mini, considering how Apple has newer iPad Pros and considering how the iPhone 7 just got announced, but Apple is yet to announce another iPad mini. And considering how this is also Apple's best selling tablet line, the iPad mini series, you'd think they would have announced one by now, but they're probably saving it up for a holiday release, I don't know. Let's go ahead and take a look at what the iPad mini 4 looks like. So here's the front of the iPad Mini 4. It looks like a normal iOS device. Right here you have your IPS capacitive touchscreen with your clickable home button. And for those of you who don't know, the iPhone 7 doesn't have an actual physical clickable home button anymore. How you click down on the iPhone 7 is um, there's a haptic feedback engine underneath the home button in the iPhone 7. So when you tap down on the fake home button, and the iPhone 7, it feels like it's clicking, but it's really not. At the top of the iPad mini, right here, you guys can probably barely see it, but you have your front facing FaceTime camera. And then on the bottom of the iPad mini, you have your speaker grills and mic grills, and of course you have your lightning port on the bottom. Now the headphone port, which is on the bottom on the iPhone 6 and 6S, it's not on the bottom on the iPad mini. You'd think the headphone port would be in the exact same place that the lightning port would be, you know, the same side of the device, but it's not. Instead, what Apple does on the iPad lines is they put the headphone port on the top here. Also on the top of the iPad, you have your power button and sleep slash wake button right over here. And then on the right side of the iPad, you have your volume buttons. This is volume up, this is volume down. And then on the left side of the iPad here, you have nothing. On the back of the iPad at the top left corner, you have your camera right here. Now something I like about this iPad that, you know, isn't exactly in the iPhones anymore is that there's no camera bulge. The camera is nice and integrated into the device. I like it how you can rest your iPad flat on a table like this and it's not wobbly because there's a camera bulge. So yeah, let's move on to specs about this iPad. This iPad has an Apple A8 chip with 64-bit architecture. And the amount of RAM that this thing has is two gigabytes of RAM, which is pretty low in 2016 standards. As far as storage goes, you can choose to have 32 gigabytes or 120 gigabytes of flash memory. And it used to come with 16 gigabytes or 64 gigabytes of flash memory, but that has since been discontinued. On the one that's sitting in front of me has 16 gigabytes of flash memory, by the way. The display is a 7.9 inch 2048 by 1536 pixel with a 4 by 3 aspect ratio. Inside it also packs an M8 motion coprocessor, proximity and ambient light sensors, and 3-axis accelerometer, a 3-axis gyroscope, digital compass, dual microphone, touch ID, fingerprint reader, and a barometer. And the camera specs, the front camera is a 1.2 megapixel 720p HD camera, and the rear camera is a 8.0 megapixel HD camera. Also, this iPad has the option of having cellular data, but the version that I have does not have any cellular data. Now, as far as ports go, it only has one data port, the lightning port, and of course it has a headphone jack, now not seen in future iOS devices. So yeah, let's go ahead and turn this on. It's already booted up, so the great thing about this iPad, since it has Touch ID, you can just use your fingerprint to unlock the iPad. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that right now. And here's a home screen. This device originally shipped with iOS 9, but since then has been updated to iOS 10, which is what I'm using right here. One thing I like about iOS 10 is that it gives you the built-in ability to delete default apps. Now, this doesn't actually delete the apps from your device, right? All it does is it deletes the icon from your home screen. And if you want to get the icon back, what you have to do is you have to go to the app store and search for the app and re-download the app through there, right? For example, if I either delete the videos app off my iPad mini here, um, let's go ahead and delete that, and let's say I want to get the videos app back now, right? So what I have to do is I have to go to the app store, 
and then I have to search for videos using the search box, right? And yeah, let's go ahead and search for the videos. And there's the videos app. Let's go ahead and download it. And look at that, it's already downloaded. Let's open it. As you guys can see, my videos app is still on my device. And so iOS 10, yeah, it's a pretty decent operating system. One thing I like about the iPad over Android is the built-in night shift mode. What this does is this basically makes it so your screen looks more orange. It takes away blue light. If you guys don't know, blue light emitting from devices can actually mimic the sun and make it harder for you to fall asleep and have a good sleep schedule. So what Night Shift does on iOS, this is the first operating system that's ever came with something like this built in. Um, basically, it tries to remove as much blue light as possible. There's still obvious blue here, but it removes the kind of blue light that's supposed to keep you awake at night. Most of you guys probably within the last nine years have used or heard of iOS in some fashion or another. All of you guys know that it's extremely easy to use. Basically, if you want additional apps to go onto your iOS device, you just go into the App Store and hit the Get button or the Buy button or whatever, and then they just magically appear on your device. And to remove it from your device, Device, you just you know hold down on the app you want to delete and then tap the X right there really easy now I did see an iPad commercial that Apple debuted this year that depicted the iPad has a real computer just when you think you know what a computer is you see a keyboard that can just get out of the way would I say that this is worthy of being a real computer Hi Siri, what's the party for? I just got a keyboard. I'm a computer now, like you. So you have more power? Like an Intel Core i7 processor? And what about a trackpad and external ports? Maybe this party thing wasn't such a good idea. Yeah, this is pretty much a real computer. You can't really, you know, do programming on here or anything like that. But most things that people use their PCs for, like games or documents or web browsing you can do that all fully on an ipad like web browsing you got google chrome right games there's plenty of games in the app store sure they aren't on the same level as traditional pc games but the games that you can get on the app store certainly aren't that bad like you can play like roblox you can play minecraft you can even play grand theft auto san andreas would i recommend buying this in 2016 well i bought this in 2016 I don't see why you can't use this in 2016. This is still the latest and greatest smaller tablet that Apple sells, and this device will probably last you way into the future. Like, Apple supported the iPad 2 for over five years. This was only released last year, so it wouldn't surprise me if support of this thing extended all the way to 2020. So yeah, thank you guys for watching this review video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Goodbye.